After breaking down the very first teaser for season two of The Rings of Power, I thought it would be fun to put together a more comprehensive video, piecing together the teaser footage along with this new behind the scenes footage that was released on the same day to see what we might be able to figure out for season two. This video contains a couple of things. I'm going to include stills from the teaser, screenshots from the behind the scenes clips, as well as some leaked set photos from various sources, and then some quotes from the cast and showrunner interviews that came out a few years ago, right after the end of season one. So there will be spoilers in this video. However, I'm not going to lean heavily on the leaks. Unless I have seen it with my own eyes via these set photos, I'm not going to be discussing rumors or plot leaks. And the leaked set photos that I will include in this video are simply there to add context to the officially released visuals that we have seen already, and so it shouldn't be too spoiler heavy. Because there was so much going on in this recent behind the scenes clip, I'm going to start by breaking things down by plotline. For this video, we're going to begin by looking at Mordor and what do we know about Mordor at this point and what do we think will happen in season two. In this clip, we can see Charlie Vickers as he's giving a little behind the scenes interview. He says, here we are in Mordor. One of the exciting things about this series is we're going to get to see Sauron out in the open, making everything happen. We'll be able to watch it all unfold. And this really backs up a lot of the interviews that were given towards the end of 2022 when the showrunners and the actors were talking about season two because it was a little bit frustrating as with season one, there was so much secrecy surrounding Sauron because they wanted to emphasize this big reveal. And so we were a little bit worried that there was going to be another season of, you know, guess the Sauron type of thing. But it would seem that we're not going to have to deal with that this time. And Sauron is kind of just going to be out in the open and we'll just be able to like watch everything unfold as he's just being straight up evil, which will be fun. In this clip, he's wearing the same outfit that Halbrand was wearing in Eregion in episode eight of season one. So we can kind of assume that the story will pick up where it left off. However, it looks like he's been having a pretty rough time. We also see Halbrand riding around on a horse in what looks like the Mordor set. So that will be pretty fun. I'm assuming he's going to at some point have some run-ins with the orcs. So that will be very interesting. Halbrand is also seen in the behind the scenes footage wearing the cloak that he wore in episode eight. So once again, it looks like we will be picking up right about where we left off, at least at some point. Going back to some of the interviews from right after season one, we have it confirmed that season two will focus heavily on Sauron's story. And that seems pretty clear based on everything that we've seen so far. Showrunner J.D. Payne told The Hollywood Reporter that they're going to be doing the same thing with Sauron as they did with Galadriel in season two, where they kind of explore their backstory and figure out what motivates them. One of the more interesting shots from this behind the scenes video is a view of Sam Hazeldean playing Adar. However, in this clip, he doesn't appear nearly as orc-ish as he does in the present day of the series, and he seems to be in some sort of icy area. My guess is that we will be getting the promised backstory of Sauron and Adar in this section where we might see Adar splitting Sauron, however that goes down, um, whatever this betrayal might look like. And it also would appear that it's going to occur in the icy fortress that we also saw in the teaser as well as in episode one of season one. Moving into the Southlands and the Pilar Gear storyline, the behind the scenes clip gave us a short interview from Ismael Cruz Cordova, who plays Arondir, and things do not seem to be looking good for Arondir, which kind of worries. Ismael said the darkness did reach him. He's received the biggest blow to his spirit thus far, and that does not bode well at all. This quote paired with a clip of Theo crying, along with a shot of what appears to be a Rondir standing at a funeral pyre kind of makes me wonder if Bronwyn will die early on in the season. Another interesting clip from the teaser that we might have missed because it was moving so quickly 
is that you can see Isildur with a Rondir in one shot, so it's clear that their characters will somehow end up colliding, which will be fun. We have been hearing rumors for a very long time that Isildur is probably going to have a run-in with Shelob, and it was actually kind of funny, I think, Max and Baldry, the actor who plays Isildur, almost accidentally spoiled this in an interview that he did maybe last year, where he started talking about doing stunt work in season two and kind of, I forget what the quote was exactly, but he's, he mentioned something about fighting a, a creature that he's kind of always thought about fighting or that he's, or that has been kind of iconic. So since that interview, I've kind of been wondering if he might have some sort of run-in with Shelob. So in the behind the scenes clips, we see Maxim in what appears to be Shelob's lair. And you can see as he's giving this little interview, you can see that he is standing in front of what looks like some storyboards that appear to be related to something spidery. You can also see this shot of what looks like a cavern full of maybe spider eggs, which is crazy. And then we also see a shot of a sealed door in the lair. And then there is an orc who appears to be wrapped up in spider web. So if you put you know, two and two together, it seems that his storyline will be heavily involved with Shelob in some way. There's also another brief clip of Isildur as he is in this kind of dark and forested area. And there are two interesting things about this. The first thing is that he appears to be holding Halbrand's old sword, the sword that we see Halbrand holding in his season one poster, which is crazy. I guess he must have left it behind at some point. And then he's also wearing this little kind of raggedy looking cloak that we actually saw in a leaked set photo where he is standing with actress Nia Towel, who has been speculated to potentially be Isildur's future wife. So there might be some sort of plot line where the two are going to meet and go on some sort of adventure or some sort of journey together, which is exciting and fun to see. We then get this really sweet quote from Maxim where he says, it's been a long wait. Some bad things might have happened, some good things may have happened, and there's a lot of danger, a lot of excitement, but we're back in Middle-earth. And I think that does speak a lot to Isildur's storyline, especially because if he is going to meet, you know, the future Mrs. Isildur in this story, along with a lot of horrible things happening, it kind of embodies this bittersweet feeling that you might be experiencing. Casa Doom. In general, things seem to be declining a bit for Casa Doom. There's a moment at the end of the behind the scenes clip where Durin is sort of seems to be rallying people and he asks if they're going to fight. This is a curious line of dialogue because I can't help but wonder whether he's trying to urge people to fight maybe against his father as they're sort of maybe going to rise up in an effort to gain Mithril or whether he's trying to persuade the dwarves to help the elves as they are fighting against Sauron. So it's not very clear what this is, what the context is, but I thought that was very interesting. Owain Arthur, who does play Durin IV, also said of what happens in this season. With Durin, his relationship with his father has gone and his pride has taken a massive hit. So I think that will probably set the stage for what his character is going to go through. That's kind of his starting point for the season. So we'll see what happens along the way. In past interviews, it was hinted that the dwarves will get some new jewelry. Peter Mullen, who plays Durin the Third, joked that maybe he'll get a new necklace. And I think it's clear that he was obviously being silly because it looks like the dwarves are going to be getting the dwarven rings this season. We see this really beautiful, breathtaking shot of King Durin the Third, and he's holding this ring, which I can't help but assume is a dwarven ring of power. So it looks like we will see in this season what the dwarven rings are going to do, what effect they're going to have on the dwarves. In another interview between Peter Mullen and Owain Arthur, they're joking around and they say, who'd have thought a ring could have so much power? They should name a show after it. The power of rings, or what about rings of power? So I loved seeing this moment because you can tell that these actors get along very well and they kind of embody that dwarven spirit that we see on the screen. So I thought this was a sweet moment. But it also seems to be a little bit of a foreshadowing because I'm assuming we will get to see the power of the rings creeping in. In the behind the scenes footage, we also see this moment of Doran III sitting in this room and he is holding an axe surrounded by just this giant pile of treasure. So I'm beginning to think he will be experiencing something akin to dragon sickness, potentially brought on by the ring. 
One of the highlights of the behind the scenes clips for those who are really interested in the music of the Rings of Power is that we got an interview from Sofia Nombete, who plays Princess Tisa, and she's talking about how the dwarves are going to do their resonating and singing throughout the season. And she says, we kind of touched on it and teased on it in season one. This time you will see us in all our glory. So that's really something to look forward to. However, the dwarves are also going to be experiencing a bit of tragedy, as we did see a clip in the teaser of some kind of gigantic boulder smashing through a bridge in Casa Doom. So while it's probably going to be like a really fun season for them, it's potentially be a bit dark and, and they'll probably be experiencing some tragedy. On the Casa Doom set, we also get a really brief moment with John Howe, who is the concept artist. And I really enjoyed seeing this clip because I knew that he had worked on season one, but I don't believe it had been confirmed that he was continuing to work on season two. So knowing that he is still there and, and that his vision is still guiding things was very fun to see and nice to know. When we're getting to Numenor in these behind the scenes clips, we get an interview from Emma Horvath, who plays Aarian, and she says something a little bit troubling. She says, it gets a little darker. The chessboard has been set, and now you're seeing the pieces move. And she's wearing this like stunningly emerald greenish bluish dress that looks really fancy. So my guess is that Aarian has maybe moved up in status since season one because her clothes were a little bit more plain, and so I'm wondering if this is meant to be representative of where she's going in society. We then see a shot of Muriel, and she's wearing all white, walking down some stairs. It has been suggested by a lot of people that this might be a wedding, because we know in The Lord of the Rings, well, in the Silmarillion, Muriel is forcibly wed to Farazone, and that's how he rises to power. However, it was noted by accounts such as Daily Rings of Power that Tara Palantir is also seen wearing white in season one. So it may be that white is simply a regal color in Numenor, and so this might in fact be her coronation instead of like a wedding. It has been widely speculated that they might leave out the wedding entirely. The whole forced marriage thing is kind of a bit traumatic, so I'm not sure if they're going to kind of keep that method of Farazone rising to power or if they're going to change it a little bit for the show. I'm not sure. The white she is wearing might also represent her being aligned with the faithful, too. That's another possibility. In what appears to be the same scene, we see one shot of Farazone in the teaser, as well as one shot in the behind the scenes where he's wearing the same outfit. So I can't help but assume that it's from the same scene. And it's when we see Farazone standing in front of a giant eagle and he pulls out his sword. He looks a little bit disheveled, and there's a huge crowd around. In this crowd, we can see actor Will Keane, who has been widely speculated to be some sort of Numenorean priest figure. So it was kind of cool to actually get our first look at him, even though it was like a tiny moment in the behind the scenes. So I'm looking forward to seeing whatever character he does end up playing. Now, in this crowd, I think I may have spotted Aarian because based on the outfit she's wearing in her little interview and the way her hair is done, I'm pretty sure this is her in the kind of dark robes. And then I'm sort of guessing that the person standing next to her might be Kemen. So they are a part of this big crowd. The eagle is coming. Everyone's attention is drawn to the eagle, obviously, because it's very cool. It will be very interesting to see what is sort of unfolding in this, because it does seem like it's a bit of a tense scene. We also see a shot of Elendil being pulled by a crowd sort of away from someone. He has his hand reaching out. And so I'm not sure if this is the same scene or a different scene, but Elendil is having a rough time. And there have been a lot of rumors and speculation that he's going to have a pretty rough time this season, which follows because he thinks Sildor is dead. We have no mention of Anarion anywhere. And Aarian might be up to no good. One of the strangest clips from the teaser was the shot of what appears to be Muriel underwater floating before this gigantic sea creature. I still have no idea what this might be, although I bet it must be some sort of a vision, but it was pretty cool that we got another shot of the making of this scene in the behind the scenes clips. Moving into Rune, this is probably the plot line that we know the least about so far. There was really only a couple seconds of clips about it in the teaser. So I'm hoping whenever the second teaser comes out, it'll maybe focus a little bit more heavily on Rune. However, we do see from an interview that Markella Cavanaugh, who plays Nori Brandyfoot, the Harfoot who went along with the stranger at the end of season one, is in this season because she's being interviewed on set. 
we also see a little bit more footage of whatever this sandstorm situation might be, which involves the stranger. And I also think that the stranger's little slippers are really cute. The way that this scene is set up and the way that the stranger's outfit and hair looks makes me wonder if they're trying to sort of recreate a sort of temptation of Christ in the desert vibe. There's also another clip of someone who looks like a wizard, and a lot of people have said that they thought this is the stranger, but I am not sure. So let me know why you think this is the stranger, and I'm just reading too much into it. But his hair seems a lot more gray and curly, and his profile looks a bit different than the stranger, I think. So I'm wondering if this might be another wizard, or if I'm just in like full delusion mode and this is just the stranger. Moving on to the final plot line that we're going to discuss in this video is Linden and Eregion. And even though these are two different locations, their storylines are pretty entwined. So let's just talk about them together. In the behind the scenes clip, Morveth Clark, who plays Galadriel, says, This season, Galadriel's being driven more by a bigger purpose. And I feel she's once again becoming connected with Middle Earth and with all the people in it. That's making her quest more important since Sauron is building his strength. And one fun thing that you can see in this is that she has these really cute, very beautiful braids, and they remind me very much of the way that she's actually described in Unfinished Tales, so I thought that was a really nice touch. You can also see that she is wearing a ring, and she's sort of fiddling with it during the interview, but I do believe that is indeed Nenya. We have been promised that Galadriel will receive her ring Nenya. Going as far back as 2023, Morvith did confirm that Galadriel will be receiving Nenya, so now we can sort of see it in action and we know that at some point during the season she will receive her ring. We don't know how early on or how late or when, you know, if the ring's going to hiding, we're not sure yet. But it was fun to see that she does indeed have it. And she's also wearing it in this scene where she's in the forest surrounded by these scary ghostly figures. With her in the forest is, of course, Elrond, who's played by Robert Arameo, Selena Lowe, Callum Lynch, and we have another actor whose name has not been introduced in the official casting list, so I'm not 100% sure who will be playing this character. But it appears that he is the character who may be facing the ghostly creature most head-on in this scene, because we can see from the behind-the-scenes clips that the scary-looking, glowy-eyed ghost appears to be some sort of a king. He looks like he's wearing a crown and a red robe. He looks very similar to the way that the Nazgul are depicted in the Lord of the Rings films, though of course he can't be a Nazgul yet. He looks maybe like a Barrow White, although I don't think that the Barrow Whites are around yet. He could be something similar. I'd also consider that maybe he could be like the former king of the Southlands, though I don't think that quite makes sense geographically. When we get to see Gil-galad in the behind-the-scenes clips, he is dressed in his golden robes from season one, as well as the golden laurel wreath, but his hair is braided, which is a fun change. My initial thought is that he's been traveling and needed a more practical hairstyle, and you can see based on the trees behind him that he is indeed in Linden, so I'm wondering if maybe he's just returned home, or if he's just about to leave to go do something. Benjamin Walker, who plays Gil Gallad, says, The second season, it really feels like the gloves come off, so that's a little hint towards what may be to come for Gil Gallad. We also see this really stunning shot of the three elven ring bearers wearing their rings. Maybe this is the first time they've put them on. So Gilgalad, he has one, of course, as well as several other rings because he's just extra. Then we have a really pretty shot of Galadriel with Nenya. And then we have a third hand that we've never seen before, who I am almost 100,000% sure this is the actor who will be playing Círdan, and he has not yet been announced, so I will wait to confirm that, but that is almost positively who he is going to be. Círdan has been confirmed quite some time. Showrunner J.D. Payne said in an interview a very, very long time ago, almost two years ago, he said that they were very excited to meet Círdan the Shipwright in season two. We also see Gil Gallad, and he has a little bit of dialogue in the behind-the-scenes clips where he says, Set a watch at every crossing. He must not escape. I think it's fairly safe to assume that this may be in reference to Sauron. It's possible that I am hopeful that Galadriel will come clean about Halbrand towards the beginning of the season. And so maybe here Galad is saying, all right, we need to look out for Halbrand. However, in the way that teasers and behind the scene clips tend to be misdirection, I'm going to leave that open ended. It's also really nice to see that Gilgalad has a different costume on, and this one is very brown and golden and like has these very rich 
colors and it also has a star brooch on the front. There's also a moment where you see Galadriel and she's sort of kneeling down. She might have been reflecting or having a kind of prayerful or contemplative moment. And you can tell by the plants and the lantern that she is in Linden. This is the little grove that we saw in season one where the different trees are carven with memorials for different elves who have fallen. So my guess is that she is here maybe trying to sort of seek some consolation before the memorial of Finrod. Of course, these aren't graves, but this sort of represents a cemetery for elves. I also don't see the ring on her finger in this scene, so it's possible that we are at some point in the early season before she has received Nenya. Maybe they flee to Linden to go tell Gilgalad, and then he's trying to decide what to do, and Círdan hasn't shown up yet. It's also in the same setting, and I'm not sure if it's going to end up being the same scene, but Celebrimbor is revealing to, I'm assuming, Galadriel, that he has had an unexpected visitor. In the behind-the-scenes clip, the video immediately cuts to what I can assume is Anatar, leading you to believe that he's telling Galadriel that Anatar has come to visit. However, Celebrimbor is later seen in this behind-the-scenes clip, standing behind Durin the Fourth in this same costume, so I can't help but believe this is intentional misdirection. So maybe they want you to think that Celebrimbor is going to tell Galadriel that Anatar has come to visit, but maybe he's really going to say, the dwarves want to collaborate more and, and we're actually going to make these really cool doors and then the doors of Doran will be introduced. Moving on to Anatar, one of, continuing along with the idea of Anatar, one of my favorite parts of the teaser was this moment where Celebrimbor is in his forge. And this is his new forge indeed, because his old forge did have sets of staircases, so I wasn't 100% sure, but I looked back and this is definitely a different place. So it must be the case that the forge they began constructing in season one is now done, and he's going to be working in it. In the forge, it's all red and orange, and there's a ton of smoke, and see this figure appearing in the smoke. and. I would say I'm almost positive this has to be Anatar, though it, well, this could be another form of misdirection. Along the lines of the Celebrimbor and Anatar storyline, we do have confirmation that season two will have a canonical story. The series showrunners have promised that there will be one. They have said there may well be viewers who are like, this is the story we were hoping to get in season one. In season two, we're giving it to them. So I'm very hopeful that we will get a very true to Tolkien story between Anatar and Celebrim. It's also in this behind the scenes that we get to see the making of this really amazing statue of Feanor. Now we have seen the statue of Feanor in leaked set photos for the longest time, but to actually see it confirmed and see it being created by this woman who appears to be a really talented person, I was really happy and impressed. And it's very interesting that they decided to include this in the making of video. So I'm very curious to see if Feanor will play an important role if his legacy will shine through, if maybe Celebrimbor is going to talk about him, or maybe Anatar will use Feanor's legacy to sort of push Celebrimbor to his, to his limit. So I'm just curious to see how that will go. I also think it's a really fun nod to the Silmarillion. In Eregion, we also see a scene that is set at night where Anatar is walking towards something in the Eregion courtyard and there are people behind him running so something seems to be wrong. You can also see a moment it's also nighttime but the lighting is different so I'm not sure if these are different scenes but Galadriel is looking up at something and she looks completely terrified. There have been some speculation that she may be looking up at Celebrimbor's body as he's being born on a banner However, I'm not sure if the show will end up taking such a dark route as Tolkien did in the books, but whatever she is looking at, she looks completely terrified, very afraid, so this will probably be a very intense scene. We can also see she's in the same outfit. She appears to be outside the walls of Eregion fighting against orcs, and it also looks like there are men among them. This is also where we get the clip of Galadriel shooting not one, but two flaming arrows, and it appears that something explodes because of this although that might just be the way that they cut the clips together. It's definitely clear from everything we've seen so far that Eregion is going to fall. It's just a matter of how they go about it that I'm unsure of. We do see several clips of Celebrimbor looking very rough. He's covered in blood and dirt, and he looks like he's having the worst day of his life, because he probably is. And it might very well be the last day of his life, unfortunately. In this clip, we see that he is throwing 
what appears to be nine rings into the fire. So I almost get the impression that he has figured out who Anatar is. He's figured out what he's done wrong in making these rings. And so he's kind of in this desperate attempt going to try to destroy them. We also see a clip of Anatar where he's looking extremely calm, cool, and collected. He's definitely not stressed out, which I... I do hope that they will show some more emotion when it comes to Sauron because the way they did it in season one where you you can sort of see this, not humanity because he's not human, but his thought process and sometimes he doubts himself. Sometimes he needs to find a new plan. He does actually sort of feel things as the story goes on. So I, I would like to see his character develop in that way and not just be like Mr. Cool the whole time. It's also in what appears to be this scene that we see some elven warriors or guards confronting Anatar, as well as Celebrimbor, who appears to have his hand mangled. At first, I thought his entire hand had been chopped off, but at first I thought he had actually lost his entire hand, but he has actually only lost maybe a couple of fingers. So I'm not quite sure where they're going with that, but it will probably be really heartbreaking. I can only assume that this Siege of Eregion that we're seeing in the teaser is going to be the promised two-episode battle that has been sort of hyped up for the last year and a half. We also see this clip of Elrond leading a bunch of cavalry towards something. It looks like they're coming through an area where all of the trees have been burned, and it almost looks due to the lighting that maybe they have been riding through the night and that the sun is about to rise. So my guess is that the Siege of Oregon will take place beginning at nightfall and all through the night and then into the day because we've seen a lot of shots of night battle as well as day battle. In this behind the scenes making of clip, Robert Arameo, who plays Elrond, says there's things that we're doing that are completely new and you do sort of get plunged straight into the story. We also see a clip of Elrond fighting, which we haven't seen before in season one, so that will be really fun for Elrond fans. The last two shots that we are going to look at from the behind the scenes footage are both of the destruction of Eregion. So we can see this one still from outside the city walls. It appears that the surrounding river has been dried up somehow and everyone's fighting on foot. It's very muddy and dirty and you see some elven warriors running towards something. And then inside Eregion in the courtyard you can see what appears to be a projectile that has been launched into the city and it's a very chaotic shot. Within this shot I've noticed one actress who sort of looks like it might be Amelia Kenworthy who is another one of the new cast members and it has not been confirmed which role she is playing. There's a moment in the teaser where a female voice says I think he has been here. I think he has been here among us all along and while I'm not completely sure whose voice that is I'm wondering if this might be her and she might be playing some sort of elvish character. So far, there has been a lot to discuss about season two of The Rings of Power. The marketing so far has been very different from that of season one, which makes me hopeful. The fact that they were willing to release this behind the scenes footage showed a level of transparency that wasn't present for season one, and that makes me hopeful for the future. Very much looking forward to hopefully getting another teaser soon, but in the meantime, it has been so fun sifting through all of these and trying to put the pieces together, and I'm sure we'll be very, very wrong about certain things. But I think it's the fun along the way and the discussions that come from the series that are the best part for me. So I have really enjoyed discussing this in my own Discord server, the Tea with Tolkien server, as well as the Fellowship of Fans Discord server and the OneRing.net servers. So if you are interested in joining in the conversation and and looking like a crazy conspiracy theorist with us, you can find the links to these different Discord servers in the description, as well as the sources for all of the leaked set photos. 